This is a pentagon, and this is a pentagon cubed. Instead of going from point to point, it curves to hit every third point. A pentagon to the fourth power hits every fourth point, and a pentagon to the fifth hits every fifth point, which is just the same every time. In my last few videos, I discussed a way to graph complex numbers by taking a circle as an input to a polynomial. But I wanted to see other shapes, not just circles, so I built this web page to make all kinds of complex graphs. Here is a hexagon. If we square it, it goes to every second point, which means half of the points get skipped. And a hexagon to the third just jumps back and forth between these two points. A hexagon to the fourth skips half, to the fifth hits every point, and to the sixth it just repeats that starting point. A heptagon has seven points, which is prime, so we always hit every point, unless the power is seven, or a multiple of seven. Instead of a heptagon, let's use a seven-pointed star. We get a similar effect. Now let's try a composite number of points, like this 18-pointed star. Squared, it hits half the points, and cubed, it hits a third of them. The proportion of points that get hit is 1 over the greatest common divisor of 18 and the power. Let's stop here and trace the output. It goes around point by point. We made the input star by jumping to every fifth point, then raised that to the eleventh power. So the output is essentially going to every fifty-fifth point, and fifty-five is one mod eighteen, so it goes one by one. If we take this shape to the seventh power, we get the opposite effect, since thirty-five is negative one mod eighteen. And we can use this tracing animation for other functions, like with the sign of a hexagon. The input and output closely follow each other, but that's just because our radius is a 1. With radius pi over 2, they're further apart. And with radius pi, this circle appears. And it remains if we go to 3 pi over 2, or 2 pi. But the output circle doesn't happen with all input shapes. Here's a heptagon, an octagon, a nonagon, and then the circle reappears as the output of a decagon. So what do these have in common? They have 6 and 10 points, which are both 2 mod 4, which means that they have these horizontal lines and it's these lines that make that circle. For another cool animation, let's rotate the input. Here's a pentagon, and a square, which is my favorite of these, and then a triangle, And finally, a digon. This digon rotation is nice with other functions, too. Let's look at the 21st cyclotomic polynomial. The output spins its arms. And they spin even faster with the 23rd cyclotomic. I won't feed a fed horse by explaining where the cyclotomics come from. I've done that in previous videos, but I will say they relate to the corresponding shape, such as the fifth cyclotomic and a pentagon, or the sixth cyclotomic and a hexagon, or the thirteenth with a thirteen gone. And the thirteenth cyclotomic also looks cool with a fourteen gone, or a twenty-five gone, or a twenty-six gone. Now, let's keep the 26 gone as an input, 
and switch to the 26th cyclotomic, and then to the 26th inverse cyclotomic. This one is great. So let's keep the function and move to a 27 gone, then a 28 gone, and a 29 gone. We could also step back down to a 13 gone. Very nice. But that's enough for cyclotomics. Let's input this 13 gone to a Fibonacci polynomial. And this is the 10th Fibonacci polynomial, so maybe we should also input a decagon. The Fibonacci polynomials are similar to the Fibonacci numbers. We start with 0, then 1, and then add them together to get the next one, except we multiply the latter by x. So the second Fibonacci polynomial is just x, then the third is x squared plus 1, and then x cubed plus 2x. And because of the setup, if we take 1 as an input to the Fibonacci polynomials, we get the Fibonacci numbers. But if we input negative 1, they jump back and forth from negative to positive. To visualize this, we'll take a circle as an input to the second Fibonacci polynomial, then go to the third, and continue. The two points are the outputs of 1 and negative 1. 1 grows larger and larger, while negative 1 jumps back and forth, and this causes a repeating output for the rest of the graph. This is the last graph I have to show, but you can make some yourself by going to the webpage linked below, which I use to make most of this video. For example, you could look at the Chebyshev polynomials, which are related to the Fibonacci. I've already covered most of the features here, but there's also an option for the color scheme. Here is winter and autumn. I'll also point out the resolution. For polynomials of a high degree, the graph can lose its curve. A higher resolution will fix that, but the frame rate may suffer. And with that, thank you for watching.